I usually use Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects and Audition, Adobe, all these are Adobe's products. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get my background and for that I use Photoshop because if you try to get the background edited in After Effects it's gonna cost a lot of memory for your computer to render the final version so what I like to do is I have my here I have my background and what I like to do is basically give it a quick blur um, you can use any background you like um, generally you just get it from online somewhere and you might want to give credit um, to whoever and I just give it a quick caution blur if, in case you missed that I went to uh, filter then blur and caution blur and I blur it just to uh, give it a nice depth of field and then I save this image um, obviously I'm gonna replace that I'm just gonna save it as two and um, there I have the image that I'm gonna be using as my background the next step I like to do is I like to change my back I obviously have to change the background so to do that I use a program called After Effects and this is a very powerful and it used to be expensive this version is an expensive version but now they have a monthly um, pro a monthly you know where you pay monthly and you get the program you know so now I'm just gonna wait for After Effects to open up and uh, when it's here I'm gonna show you what I do to get the uh, file so I'm gonna use the sample and sample video that I've made before it's a previous and I'm just gonna drag it in it's a previous video that I have done for you guys um, you, sh you, you have probably seen it before but um, I know that I've dragged it here into the project uh, panel I'm just gonna drag it down onto my timeline and here you can see the, image, the video and this, this is my fruits video, in case you couldn't tell. The next thing I would like to do is drag my image. So the image that I rendered, I'm going to drag this over. And I'm also going to drag this onto my timeline. Uh, as you can see, it's not big enough, so I'm just going to stretch it by pulling these dots, these four dots, and I'm gonna hold shift so that it stays in proportion. Right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is right click on my right click on my image, my video file, and then I'm gonna go to effect. And then we wanna go to keying and then we're gonna go to key light 1.2 and this is what we're gonna use to key out the green screen. You're gonna go to screen color and you're gonna click on the eyedropper tool right here and this is gonna sample the, the color that you want to remove and here we have the green and there it's as simple as that now if you look carefully you can see that I am a bit transparent <laughs> and that's because the plugin does a lot of work but it still it needs a lot of tweaking you know so to see what is taking place, you're gonna go to the view and you're gonna change this to screen mat and here you can see what exactly is taking place. So the black areas determine the areas that are hidden and the white areas determine the areas that is uh, seen and what you wanna do here is you basically wanna make the black areas completely black and the white areas completely white so you're gonna use green gain and screen balance to assist with that and here you can see as I increase the screen gain the black areas got really black and so does some of the white areas and now I'm gonna shift the screen balance to the right sorry until my white areas are completely white um, it's all the way up to 100 so we have the 
helps blend this helps blend uh, the subject with the background a lot better now this step you can omit it you can uh, you can reduce the opacity you can do whatever or you can just leave it without I think I left it without that this step when I published my fruit video and um, this is basically it yeah, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna leave it on and I'm gonna reduce the opacity a lot. I know this seems like uh, you basically do the same thing. You 
Wi-Fi file export. Sorry. File export onto render queue. And this time you want to change it to um sorry. Uh, you want to change this to um uh, H.264 and hit OK and you just want to render that out. And once that is rendered, you should have something like, you should have the final image basically, you should have the final, uh, the file ready to, um, okay, you should have something like this. It's gonna have no audio. And what you're gonna do now is carry this to Adobe Premiere Pro. And um, actually, let me show you how I edit the audio first. I don't do much to the audio. Previously, in the past, I did a lot to the audio. But that depends on the type of audio that you have. Those are things don't really matter because when I import it, it changes. So, um, for the audio here, I, I use Adobe Audition. Um, it's a really powerful program, as I've said, um, all of Adobe programs tend to be very powerful. And, um, basically, I, I don't do much to the audio. Um, I basically just drag it in, match volume, drag it into the match volume window. The, double click, uh, this is what it looks like. And, loudness needs to be at minus 20 and I just run this and this actually makes the audio a lot louder and uh, clearer um, I'm just gonna wait for that to uh, uh, whatever it has to do to whatever it has to do and then after that I'm gonna um, after that I'm going to
this is my general settings for my microphone. Um, I'm not sure how I got to this point. I just got to this from playing around with the hammer. It gets rid of uh, like deep humming sounds that I'm not sure where it comes from, but it's just in the environment, I guess. And I apply that the armor to it. Um, there's no, there's no formula or any you know strict rule as to what what you do with respect to that. Um, but that's what I generally do. And after I do that, I'm not even gonna waste my time waiting for that. After I do that, I save it. And when I save it, I then import it into Premiere Pro. And once that is imported, you're gonna open it right here into the source panel, source panel, right? And you wanna zoom in to find that clapping sound, and here it is. I'm sure this is it. Yeah, that's it. So you wanna zoom in, and you wanna find right where it starts. So, that's it. You wanna hit N, you wanna hit I for N, for the N point. Drag this up a bit. And you want to drag it down right there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hit, hit C to get the cut tool, razor tool, whatever it is. And you want to hit shift and click and cut right through. Sorry. You want to hit shift and cut all the way down. And hit V. Hit V so that you get back your selection tool and delete these two things. And now you want to delete this in the middle because this is not the that's the, ex, the internal audio you want the external audio and you want to select these two files and then link them together right click and then link and now wherever you move one file the board both of them goes to the same spot and that's really how i sync my audio and um now the reason why this isn't as long as this is because this is not the exact same audio file because I have them mix all mixed up. Um, usually it would be the same length and this is not the audio for this video basically is what I mean. So um, basically this should be the same length as this if you do the steps correctly and if you use the exact audio file. Uh, and now you can edit them. And um, that's basically how I do it. And when I edit it, I just, after I'm finished editing, editing is basically cutting, cutting out the things that you don't want, and so on and so forth. For when I have to do my shout outs, um, this is what I do. Um, so here is one of the shout outs that I did. So basically, I make a print screen of the person, and then I drag it onto my timeline like this. And um, basically, you got the effect controls. So basically, you can see it's not in the right position, so I position the, the image where I want it to be. So first of all, I want the scale to be at 200, so it needs to be bigger. And then I want the position a lot lower. Sorry. Lower. So around here. You. I want it right about here. So, and uh, once you get the position where it needs to finish, where it needs to, um, where it needs to be, basically, you wanna create a what I what they call an animation point or I can't remember the keyframe. That's what it's called. You call it. You can create. You wanna create the keyframe right there. And you want to create another keyframe at the end as well. And what you want to do now is create two more keyframes, right? One has to be before. So at this point, you just, um, you just want to change its location. So by changing its location, it creates a, automatically creates a keyframe. So as you drag in, it, it comes in for itself. See, it, see how it drags in? And then when it reaches here, um, after this, I'm going to create another keyframe where I pull it out in this direction. So you can see now as it plays. I think I'm going to check out your videos as soon as I'm done. You see, it uh, 
it disappears and that's really how it's done um, it comes in and disappears and I do that basically I just copy and paste the settings I copy and paste the settings on this and um, I copy the settings okay so I go to effects and opacity and right click and copy and um, for, the, for the other images so if I have another image for example this one this other person I copy this here and I basically just sorry I come here and I hit paste and it copies the settings so it does the exact same thing over and over and that's really how I edit my entire video that's my workflow I know it's such a very complicated uh, procedure to some extent especially if you're new to Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects and Audition and Photoshop and um, but that's really how it's done and you know it's the same process over and over and over again so um, it is very complicated at first but if you get used to it um, it becomes very easy and um, I encourage you guys to take some time to edit your videos as far as cutting goes um, what I do when there's something I don't want I use the C, I hit C to get the razor tool cut, cut the points that I don't want hit V and then hit shift delete and that deletes it and creates the cap and clears the cap immediately so that's really what I do when I'm cutting and stuff. But that's really how I edit videos generally. Um, obviously a lot more time and effort goes into this process. But um, most of the time really sp is spent rendering and so on. So um, that's really it for now guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found some useful tips and tricks. Um, along the way thank you guys for watching and um i'll see you guys in the next